looking after other things, other people, other um, animals, other and my gardens. It takes your mind off yourself. I'm a transgender woman. I finally came out and transitioned to life as Bobby Lancaster four years ago. Helping people, it just feels natural. I think part of it starts when I was little. I grew up in a very small town where everybody knew everybody and everybody helped everybody. So I was medical director of a major hospice company. And to be told that because of who I am, nothing to do with how I was performing, but just to be told that I'm really not welcome here anymore, it just it ripped my heart out. Threw Lucy and I in a tailspin financially. We didn't really know how we were gonna survive how we'd pay our mortgage, how we'd pay our bills. I had some free time on my hand. That's when I got my golf clubs out. That's my go-to, if I need to think or relax or reflect or, hey, I gotta go hit some golf balls. In the early years, the game of golf meant time with my father. That was the one place where we could connect. But then the game of golf became something that I really excelled at, and it gave me all kinds of like swagger. I loved being a great player. I loved winning things. And then that's what brought me to playing amateur golf and then turning pro. And I finally had time to find out how good can I get. I've talked to the Petersons, so in about an hour they're expecting us, and then I can go over and oh, okay. do my chest and all that stuff. Oh, good. Bobby and I met in um, 1995, and then we um, got married in 1999. When Bobby decided to transition, it, it wasn't like a day that I can re remember um, a, a little gradual inching towards a goal. I was blissfully ignorant and, and really didn't educate myself as much as I should have. If I didn't acknowledge it, it wasn't real and it wasn't going to happen. Just kept saying, well, Bob would never blow up our lives like that. Like, you know, people I've seen on Oprah. I hid who I was forever. Do you understand what it means to hide? To never let people know who you really are? To always be wishing that you could just live your life openly. And little by little, um, I kept watching her change. And every victory for her was a little bit of a loss for me. She knew something was up. And that's when I got into this vortex of really serious depression. And then uh, got the old suicide plan going like depressed people can sometimes do. I didn't understand it and that's that's where I, I wish I could go back and do things differently. And we were going to work as a couple or, or we weren't. She loved me, still does. And without her, I don't know how I would have done. I have a lot of doubts about how I would have done. Her staying and us being so solid, that's like made all the difference. Good to see you. Oh, it's great to see I you, like Marilyn. I like outfit. That's nice. Yeah. How's the line of flying today? She was, she was struggling. She was really fighting it. She, she was one over at the start. Now she's three under in the day. Okay. So oh, she's good. turned it around. We okay. got. She'll make the cut then. You bet. Okay. You bet. I, I want to compete again, and maybe I can win something big. And I just want to be known as a really good player, again. That was the sole motivation. I had to find a, a tour to play on. One of which was the Cactus Tour. It's owned and operated by Mike Brown. There's four or five men's mini tours in Phoenix right now. There's two women's mini tours in the country. I don't play the game at all, so I don't teach, I don't coach. My job is to have events where they can have a place to come and play. There's just a need as a stepping stone to that next level. We're a place to hone the game so that you can move towards that, that dream that you're chasing. When I looked on the Cactus Tours website, I noticed that there was a requirement to be able to play in that tour that I had to be female at birth, which, I mean, that's just talk for like, no, I'm not gonna be allowed to play in this tour. 
if there was any one time where I thought like, this isn't just about how good a player can I be? This is about like pushing back. So I called him up. Hi, this is Mike. Hi, this is Bobby. I have a question for you. I said, okay, since do you still have the female at birth issue in your policy? And it was, I had bought the tour. It was my second year. I hadn't changed any of the policy. And I said, yes, we do, but it's, you know, it's not, we don't enforce it. She goes, okay, I'd like to play. I said, all right. And of course he thought I was like some goofball, I think initially, like he had to remind me that this is a, a tour for women professionals, not a guy. And that's when I got into the issue of me being transgender with. I said, Bobby, I said, this is new to me. She goes, it's new to me too. So we had a long t conversation about that policy and about me and about my goals of trying to be a good player and I need the best competition. And I said, okay, so here's the deal. I'm just gonna treat you like one of the girls. As far as he, he's concerned, I'm welcome to join the Cactus Tour. And I've always treated her like one of the girls. Ever been filmed just taking your clubs out of your car before? I don't play golf, remember? <laughs> hey. Good morning. How good to you? see you. You too. I'm good. I'm glad you're here. Brilliant, the 1147 start time from World Tour in Arizona, Bobby Lancaster. Hello, ladies. I've clearly thought that there is, you know, a competitive advantage that I have. I'm not convinced at all that just um, having some surgery and being on hormones really diminishes that transgender woman enough to make it fair. Bobby, she realized, I think, after some point, that the advantages that trans people have over cisgender people are not as big as she thought. What if a really incredible young 25, six, seven-year-old phenom is a transgender woman and now wants to play in the LPGA Tour. Someone who can hit it 330 yards. It wouldn't be feasible for them to play a different set of tees, the transgender tees. I'm telling you, my hunch is that it's still an unfair advantage. It's incredible how we think that men are so much superior to women. I mean, you take golf, for example, all you're talking about is a few yards uh, in, in driving tee distance. With golf, it's not always about strength. It might just balance out. It doesn't necessarily matter. So she does that have maybe an advantage in the strength and the build, but um, you know, with golf being such a feel sport, a lot of finesse, strength isn't always the, the biggest determinant of how well you play. So I don't think that there's a huge advantage, but maybe she might win a long drive contest if she and I were out playing. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal is a foot taller and 150 pounds heavier than I am. Randy Moss is taller and much faster than I could ever make myself be. Shaquille O'Neal's advantages over me in basketball are a lot bigger than any transgender woman's advantages would be over a cisgender woman in any sport. Yet, simply because we were both born men, his advantages are deemed fair and a trans woman's advantages are deemed unfair. In the future, I think it'll be a moot point. Women of the future that want to maybe play the LPGA Tour are probably going to be, they'll have transitioned in their teens. They'll have never gone through a male puberty. And then it'll just be no need to even think about handicapping. Because of some of the activities I was doing in Arizona, I was discovered by the human rights campaign, if you want to put it that way. My ability to change hearts and minds by telling my story or meeting people, I didn't know that it, I could be that much of a change maker. It just got that Im feeling of importance being in Washington. I'm looking forward to being on Capitol Hill today. Are you looking forward to today? Of course I am. We're going to knock some kids like we did last year. You bet. Right.
I'm here to lobby on behalf of HRC concerning several bills that have been introduced to Congress. These young people have still got a tough go. They're all emboldened, they come out, and then they get bullied, they get harassed, they get beat up. Trans hate is alive and well. In Arizona right now, when you come out, you have a one in four chance of being kicked out of your home. That's, that's the reality they're facing. This is a pointed reality that, that to me is so frustrating because we've seen it before. We've seen it in the lynchings of our past. We started at the riots in Stonewall. We've seen it with Emmett Till and Matthew Shepard. We live in a nation with horrific violence still targeting people based simply on who they are. The most powerful tool we have in changing the culture of sports for LGBT people is LGBT athletes and coaches themselves. When Michael Sam and Jason Collins and Robbie Rogers and Renee Richards, when they share their stories and their struggles, it resonates with people, it resonates with other athletes, it resonates with fans, it resonates in the media. And I think that is the power of a Bobby Lancaster. Just showing up as a trans woman in sports, it speaks volumes and, and it resonates with people because people see authenticity, and when they see authenticity, that changes culture. Hello, peekaboo. 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 Golf has factored into every damn thing I've done my whole life, and it will continue. I don't know what new chapter there'll be when I'm 80 or 85 or 90 or something, but golf will be there in some way. In the end, it's a story about pushing back the narrative that I bought into and that a lot of us frankly buy into, that there's something wrong with us. I've come to the conclusion now in my 67th year that there really never was anything wrong with me. I'm just fine.